Yes. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about project workflows and tables. So workflow is basically, it refers to a series of good habits that you get into your coding process and uh, that will help you save time and headache down the road. So it's always advisable if you are working in uh, with R, for example, you are using a IDE such as R Studio. So it is uh, advisable to um, save your, uh, you know, saving your workspace, not to save your workspace because if you save your workspace, it's basically, oh, my see, sorry. So when you save your workspace, it basically create an image of all your files and all your variables and the graphs which you are working on. It create an image of that and it saves it as a .r data file, uh, data file. And when you next time reopen that project again, then it will kind of load everything which you were working on it previously. And uh, that is not advised to do because it's not uh, reproducible. And there might be some changes happened and you know you might be working on on something today and after two months if you open the, your workspace if you have saved your workspace then it will kind of open everything and there might be changes maybe you have changed some folders and your uh, working directory has changed or maybe there are some uh, things which were done previously in a old version of your script so it's always advised not to save your workspace, but save your code, you know, using a .r or .rmd extension. And this is really important for uh, reproducibility. If you share it with someone, then they can run that code and they can reproduce your results. So that's the main Think for reproducibility to always save your code and not your workflow because you can recreate your you know our environment using your code okay and then next time when you are for example um uh so okay i think this is just repeating the same thing when you quit or do not save your workspace and when you launch then you kind of do not reload the workspace from the dead dot or data file so basically you have to do these uh, um, configuration if you haven't done before for your r studio so you go to tools and in global options like here and you have to make sure that this box is unchecked and this one is set to never to never save your workspace as a dot or data file and you can use this little, you know, string of code in your script, and this will remind you. It will print a reminder how to do yeah. this. Hi, camera. You are not showing your R Studio. Are you showing your R Studio or no? Uh, can you see my slides? Yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Cool, cool, cool. I'm just using my slide, but I'm just ah. saying, you know, if you use this, this is a R package. I think you have to install that package first. What is it used for? It's used for to print a reminder, like, you know, how to do these settings. Oh, my city is going on crazy all the time. So for example, let me see if I can, if I can share, show you, you know, my uh, studio. Yeah. So the, pack, the name of the package is use this. Use this, yeah. So what the package does? Okay, show me, I don't know. What. Well, the, the package got it can do many things but this uh, is just one of the function from that package i'm showing you which is uh, related to this uh configuration you know to mm -hmm. not to save your workspace but the, i mean this is just an extra thing you, you don't have to worry about that what i'm trying to uh here to stress is this mm -hmm. you can just you can just go to your r studio and go to global and then uh, uh use when you come yeah. to these general settings, yeah. to make sure this is unchecked and this one is set to never. Yeah, I understand this, but uh, 
uh, if you go back to yeah so please can you show us in our studio what this means what you are trying to explain with this use blank yeah, slide. okay can you see yeah. my our studio now no select sure you are um oh sorry desktop okay, one second. desktop um, sorry <laughs> sorry i want to understand what it does like yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. that's fine this is it isn't it yeah okay okay can you cool see now? Yeah, we can see your Zoom, your, I mean, Slack. Yeah, we can see your RStudio now. So, wait a bit. So, give me a second. Where mm -hmm. is it? It's supposed to be at the top. Oh, hey. So, oh. is this something, some JavaScript stuff here? Yeah, no, here. Can you see my console? Yes, I can see. So, if you just do that, then it will see, it will tell you to, to start our, our studio sessions with a blank slide. You must set interactively, and it will tell you to go to global. Basically, what I showed you, it will just tell you here. So it's just ah, okay. a reminder, you know, in your code. So if somebody is running it, ah, you know, okay. so they follow the same procedure. Okay. Okay. And uh, share. You see my slides now? Mm -hmm. Now, where is. Um, where should I find my slides down? <laughs> you can just click on the slide because what did you, uh, did you share your desktop before? Um, here, yeah, share desktop. But I have so many things open, so I'm just gonna, where is it now? Yeah, here. Yes, yes, we can see. You see now, yeah? Yeah. So that's that done, and then you can just, save these settings apply mm -hmm. these settings mm -hmm. and then so this is just the uh, configuration uh, and then you can obviously it is always advisable to uh, you know if you are working on different projects so it's always advisable to use the uh, you know from our studio the uh, our studio projects yeah i have a question uh, yeah uh, regarding the previous um, starting your session in, in, in fresh um, environment. So the books uh, I try in my Mac, um, the shortcut mm -hmm. to restart R is like command sh Alt shift F10, but it's not working for me. Anyone use a Mac and he can, what do you press the shortcut to restart? I use Mac, but I, I never use a shortcut. I just go to you know, session and restart uh, yeah. using mouse. Yeah, I know. But, yeah, um, because I think I it's just, if you look in your R studio, the shortcuts, it might be a different shortcuts. Yeah, all right, let's get going. And you can change that. Yeah, let's go. But going. Uh, I always just go and, you know, okay. session and restart, I use that. Yeah, all right. So, don't use shortcuts for everything. It doesn't take <laughs> long. <laughs> so, so to do the project, I'm sure you guys will know how to create project. It take like, you know, a few seconds only. Mm -hmm. So, but to just emphasize why it's important. Uh, so it's always good to put all your files related to a single project in a designated folder. And then you save them somewhere maybe you can create a folder and then you can just put different art projects in there or you can save it somewhere different you know you can use a um, different working directories for each project uh, separately and uh, to create a project is quite easy you just go to file and new project i don't have the screenshots for them but I, i'm sure everyone know how to do yeah, this yeah yeah just go to file new project and then you choose a name for it and then you choose a subdirectory where you want to save the project but uh you can also open like you know more than one project 
if you have to work simultaneously. And uh, so every R project will have its own, like if you see with this screenshot, I have opened three different projects. So everyone mm -hmm. will be open in a separate R process. And then you can use, uh, you know, you can uh, switch between different, like using command plus tab on Mac. Mm -hmm. You can switch between different projects or alt plus tab on Windows. Yeah, so um, I want to add to you guys your workflow. So for instance, when I open an, a project, and mm -hmm. maybe it is like R Markdown or something like that. So um, what I normally do, like my code, RMD, I just create multiple just inside the project. So I was, as I was reading, it is better to put the script in one folder inside the project, right? To put the picture inside the project in one folder, everything inside one folder. Is it, how do you do that? How? For different projects? No, in one project. So for instance, in one project, we, have pic we may have pictures, we may have yeah. video clips, we may have our scripts, right? So yeah. how do you categorize all these? You, cr you create a folder to hold pictures, you create no. some folders to create uh, the co uh, scripts, or how, do you, how is it done? So, so my understanding is it will be, it will, everything will be saved in your working directly for that project. So mm -hmm. if you have a if you have a, a a folder for for example on your desktop for project A, so everything you do any graphs any you know data frames it will be in that folder. So you don't have to create anything separate. If okay. you have a if you have a different project, then you can have a different uh, okay. subdirectory for that. But you know it's like your home directory. So mm -hmm. whatever directory when you are creating a project and you, you give a name and you mm -hmm. choose a place where you want to save that project. So everything you do in that project, it will be just saved there. Mm -hmm. And once you open it, once you open it, you will see it, uh, you know, in your R studio, in your um, file environment. Okay, cool. You will see all the, if it's, if it's a PDF, it will say dot .PDF. If it's a R script, it will say .R. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to do a okay. secret. Okay, all right. Okay, yeah. so I, okay, so I just uh, did, uh, you know, the tables because the other one is just um, an introduction, you know, to the, the section in the book. So I just jumped into tables. Mm -hmm. So tables are like data frames, uh, but they tweak some older behavior to make life a little easier because you know in our it's, it's really difficult to make some changes in the base r so obviously all the changes or all, all the innovation has to be done in a in a package and and table is a package and it's also part of the tidyverse uh tidyverse package so you don't have to uh, use it or call it separately like you know we do library table if you just do if you uh, implement tidyverse then you can just work with tables and you can see here what are the differences between a table and a, a data frame so to create a table you just use as underscore table and any data frame will be convert it to a table. And the, uh, the benefit of using tables is it's more like kind of readable and it, it will not like clutter your uh, screen, your R studio environment, your console, because it only print 10 rows. And uh, I think if, if, if it was using a data frame, I don't know if it's like more than 300 or something rows. For the table, it only prints 10 rows, so it's easy to read. And it will tell you how many more rows are there. And also, if you have like a screen narrowed down, so it will, according to your screen size, it will print that many columns, which it can fit in that screen. If you uh, maximize your screen, then it will kind of adjust the number of uh, uh, columns to the area which is available to it. 
you can also create a table from an individual vector um, like this you just use table and then you give a column name and put some data in there and it will create like this and it will also tell you what kind of values in these columns are if it's integer or if it's a factor or if it's a double uh, while in data frame it won't tell you these things so is this clear yeah but i mean this way okay this way to create table is just for maybe experimental purpose right to just check some stuff because it's not like i mean the one of the uh most useful uh function for creating table is the first one you made mention right as table that you yeah, used yeah. To, to yeah if you have a data frame already and you want it to mm -hmm. visualize it as a table then you just say as yeah. dot table because the other one we cannot create large data frames with the with the yeah, yeah. okay and if you want to see for example maybe like uh, if you, if you have a data frame and you don't know if it's a data frame or if it's a table then i think it's is mm -hmm. underscore table and then you give the name uh, uh -huh. of the data frame and uh -huh. then it will tell you true or false like if it's a table it will tell you true but if it's not then it will tell you false ah okay so uh, okay because i was trying to uh in the exercise to show to check whether a data frame is table so i just use class to find whether it... oh yeah you can use class as well that's that's true yeah okay cool yeah all right so we have the function is table that shows whether yeah okay okay cool so and other uh, benefits of that that tables does not convert strings to factors and it never changed the name of a variable and it never create the row names yeah um, and also you can create like a column names which are kind of non syntactic in the r which are not allowed in the r when you are using for example a data frame but here with table you can for example uh, make column names which start with uh, a number or have like a space in between so for um, example here yeah um I, I can you please explain this the neighbor change the name of a variable so how does the data the data frame the traditional data frame changes the name of the variable while table doesn't change the name of the variable? i don't know how in when where okay yeah, I thought about that, but um, the one I can think of to change the name of the variables. Alan, do you know about it? Yeah, if you give a quick, uh, a quick example normally, like if you, if you, for example, have a data set from, oh, you importing on um, a, a data set, whatever. <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking. Uh, if, if you're importing data from Excel, and yeah. you have, for example, a column which is um, labeled as a number, like two hundred. So when you okay. use, when you're using data frame to import that, um, the the, the fun data frame is going to actually create some kind of maybe x underscore two hundred. Okay. Uh, so it it converts them in a way. First of all, converts the the the, the variable names to to something that is acceptable in in R. And uh, also then the other thing is that uh, the most annoying thing is it converts every string to factors. Yeah, that's the thing. You have to use as, you know, strings dot factors as falls or something. Yeah, so that's, that's, what, that's what I could think about, really. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, you're right there. And the, you know, the create row name, um, what is it? Yeah. Because sometimes, you know, in the data frame, it create like V1. So I think that's never create row names. So you have a, like, for example, if you have nine columns in your data frame, it will create an extra column. And when you, uh, you know, bring it to our studio, it will say it has 10 columns and one will be just like V1 and then one, two, three, you know, up to how many rows you got in the data. 
but in tibas it doesn't do that. Mm, yeah. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you. And then we have transpose table, triple. So it's kind of a, a customized for data entry in a code. And you have to use a, this tilde before your column name. And, uh, and you have to use comma to separate your values, the entries in those columns like here. Yeah. So yeah. if it's a string character, you use the double quotation. If it's a number, you just separate them with the comma. And then it will create this. So this is like a kind of a quick way to do a small data in an easy to read format. But um, I don't know yeah, how, I mean, who will need this. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I mean, why do we need the table while we have that table? I mean, we can write this the way we, <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, the way we, the table way, the way we write table is better yeah. approachable than table. It's a little so, bit complicated. So actually, I've, I've abused both depending on what I want to do. Um, I, I like I like triple uh, sometimes when I want to be able to see what I'm inputting in front of like columns and rows. Yeah, yeah. But I'm, I haven't. I think I've been using table itself. I don't know that yeah, it was an update or something like that. So I've, to be I, honest, sorry? I haven't used any of them. I just uh, I knew about table, but. Uh, in my work, I never used this, but uh, now I know about this. And triple, I just heard about it first time in this book. Yeah, but, I basically uh, use the same syntax, but with table. Yeah, but I just don't see a difference. Like, okay, what is the difference here? The output is just. Yeah, the the output is the same. It's just uh, the how you create it. You know, uh, here you creating it in form of like. Uh, Columns, you can see that in this you input okay. it by a row, for example. But in table, yeah. you inputting, you creating it by sort of like a column. Like column, yeah. yeah. Because here is is to me, it's not really good readable. But to me, this is good. Like yeah. you have okay, this is my name, and this is the value. Yeah. This is the second column, and this yeah. is the, this is the value goes in there, and here is like okay. You gotta be your eyes look into it like what's going on here. <laughs> but maybe for some people it's easy, I don't know. Yeah, so I use both of them, uh, depending on what I want to what how what sample data set I want to create and how easy I want to identify it. Yeah. And yeah, you so to, you have yeah. to look for this tilde on your layer. You can just use X and over there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I, um, based on uh, Alan's explanation on why, I mean, the names of, I mean, variable change with data frame, I share one link here. So it, and that it, it's, it's exactly the way Alan was explaining, like um, uh, a data frame, for instance, we have a variable cra crazy space name and that comma crazy name, that is a space. So when you use, ta when you use table uh, data frame, it will change that variable to crazy dot name. It will add dot. Yeah. Dot. Ah, okay. Yeah, it will add dot if you do it. But um, yeah, so something like that. Oh so, yeah, because R doesn't need. It has to be a dot, no space in between. So if mm -hmm. if, if there's a space, then it will put a dot or underscore. I think. Yeah, but but diff table will allow will leave it the way it is as crazy name yeah. without that dot. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So, you know, mm -hmm. and then, uh, okay, T tables versus data frames. So the two differences, I think we discussed one of this when printing is only print 10 rows and uh, all the columns that fit on the available screen. And it also report the columns type under its name. So uh, it just look too much. Uh, I think that I have included the results here. So like here. So we will give the type of the variable and all the columns and it will only print 10. As we already discussed that. Second, we will minimize this. And, but sometimes if you need more than the default display, then you can obviously change 
you can use the pipes and you can use and i have put equal five here but you can put 100 here or whatever number how many rows you want to locate or you can just use like uh, the weave option in the uh, studio as well so yeah. the width equal infinity will just put all the you know the columns but uh, if you want to a different column then you can maybe put call equal five or one to five but here it will it will run it will print only five rows and all the columns uh, so Cameron you are saying like if we need if I put width equals to five does that print only five columns or what no. I haven't I haven't tried that I don't know if it will work but uh, um, can you so see if I... yeah and does is this print the R base R print yeah. or different print no it's the base R print is it are you sure yeah because um if you look at um so people i mean if you look at this in table you can see that they has, um, they made mention that tables also have an enhanced print method so if you okay. yeah tables have an enhanced print method if you just read the first paragraph the last part of the first paragraph uh, so mm. enhanced print method which makes them easier to use with large data set containing complex object so my question is this print method is not the print of the base r okay this is uh, interesting i th i thought it's is the the base r but um yeah me too because then i'm like why isn't it conflicting you know like if you have two two um two functions that are in two packages then uh, one is going to i think like i would i would think that the one in best r is superseding any other uh function yeah but when you are using base, i mean tidyverse when you load the tidyverse i think the tidyverse packages will over supersede the base r could be hmm. yeah so this print is not the actual base art prints as you can see from the table page in the tidy mm -hmm. bars so my question is this width um because like um i try to modify i don't know like it's not giving me what i expect so this infinity is telling us it displays the whole uh, columns, yeah. uh mm -hmm. column okay so it's sort of like switched here and then they're calling n the, the, the rows, which to me is like, mm. <laughs> I always think that the rows are like M, you know, but uh, here they're, they're calling. They're okay. Using. Okay. My question now is how can we see the documentation for this print in the tidy verse? Like, how can we see the relevant arguments for this print for the tidy verse? In, because if I use print in, oh, it may, in RCO, it may shows me the RCO. R default, I mean, mm -hmm. R pack, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so that we can know what we should g be given inside. Um, you understand my guess, question? Uh, yeah, I guess it will be in, uh, if you just look at tidyverse documentation, mm -hmm. uh, then it will, it, you will, it will have something about print because mm -hmm. I, I I never thought about like you know I just thought it's <laughs> print <Yeah>. is print. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand. But uh, Shamshuddin, you are um, going too deep into it. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but on 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 second thought, I'm, I'm thinking this print is the best R print. However, when you're talking about uh, the the printing, uh, the the special printing for for uh, the verse, it might be the one where you change with the options. I think, I mean, if, if it's a table has special print method, maybe it just means that the output it print, like that's kind of special output. It print 10 rows and it print with the column, the type of the column. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, I can look into it. I, I never thought of it. I just saw that it's a base art print, but you can look into that. Yeah. But uh, width equal five. I don't. I don't think that will work. It's just maybe you have to do like n call and n rows, and then you can just put n n rows equal five and n call equal how many columns you want. You know, without using this method, you can just use a select. You know, n call equal five or n rows. Yeah, so you know that function number of yeah. So I think um the print one we are talking about, so it does have four arguments from the uh, table okay. documentation. The first one is the object to print. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep, and we have n, which specifies the number of rows to show. Then we have width, width width of the text output to generate. Okay. And yeah, and we have n uh, extra number of extra column to print abbreviated something like that. You can look at it um, in the uh, what I shared in page ten. In page ten. Mm. Printing tables. Yeah, in page ten, we printing tables. So you can one of the main feature of table has. Uh, is that in the book? Class, the, no, no, no. I shared this. No, no, no. Oh. In the book. I shared in this. Um, yeah. So in the chat, if you if you click and go to the PDF, page 10 of the PDF, so you would see what the title is for Martin, Printing Tables. Can you see that, Alan? Yeah, I can see it. So if you go to the, yeah, you can see one of the main feature of table data from class is the printing. Yeah, so print, printing can be tweaked for one call or by calling print explicitly and certain argument like n and width and something like that. So these are the argument of the print. If you look, go down, yeah. Mm. And print has some option, table print marks, row number threshold that you can set and print table print minimum, the row no, minimum number that if you do not specify, the table will be printing those, maybe if you have predefined, but the default printing of the table print 10 rows, but you can change that you, so that you can change that so that whenever you are working anytime, it will yeah. print the predefined maximum and minimum you set. So these are some okay. of the options you can see them in 11, page 11. So they even give an example on how to, uh, change that one yeah something like that anyway okay let's okay keep, let's keep going good. good to know okay where is my screen now you can see the slides now yep okay so okay then subsetting Okay, so I didn't know about these double brackets. I always use this, <laughs> the dollar sign. Yeah. But uh, obviously you can uh, pull out a single variable using that or the these double square brackets. Mm. And the, the benefit of that, that you can use the position as well. For example, if it's column one, then you can just put one in there and you can use the name while in the dollar sign you can obviously only use with the name you can extract a variable with name only uh -huh. yeah like uh -huh. here yeah or then you if you're using these double brackets then you have to put this in quotation mark and uh, by position like here you just give one <clears throat> or you can use uh, this pipe and then you can put this dot dollar sign next to it like a special placeholder. So it will just put it in there for you. Similarly here. Yeah, is that clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I'm just wondering when I would need to use this. Uh, the one with the... I, I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those things like there's too much detail in this uh, this book that maybe you don't even remember it when you are working. Yeah. Yeah, but um, also he made mention like um, with uh, this selection. So if you remember with uh, filter and some stuff. <laughs> we don't select maybe column with this some way. We use the tidy bars option to filter and what the other one to select column and to select uh, rows. So yeah. they are not terribly used sometimes with uh, tidy bars approach. Maybe this uh, most widely used approach maybe in the base R to select column. Yeah. But you know, in uh, Tidy was we just use select or you know right <laughs> yeah yeah just a deep layer of that approach yeah is, is yeah the best. yeah yeah but in tables uh, because okay I didn't even know this as well that in tables uh, you can't have partial matching mm -hmm. while in data frame like I think I have a next slide here oh this is a question okay so yeah okay this is actually one of the exercises as well. So if you have this data frame and then you, for oh, example, where is if question you have, one? Where is question one? But question one is just a really basic. So I didn't what do it that. says? I don't know. No, he's, he's just explaining uh, based on the, 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 the partial matching. Yeah. Ah, okay. Because okay. Question, question one is how can you tell if an object is a table? Ah, I see. So, so, yeah, I mean, you said it's basic, but you told us a function called is table. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it's only now when you made mention that it's table so is the function. I haven't done all the question. I have done only, I think, two or three. So because okay. this was just part of the, like a continuation in the chapter, inside the chapter, and this question was related to that. So I just put a there. Uh -huh. uh, the question is like, uh, you can compare and contrast these different functions and uh, what is the difference and why the data frame behavior might cause you frustration. So if you have, for example, this is your column name and this is another column name. So if you're using a data frame and you use like uh, here, just data frame dot X, it will still give you the X, Y, Z because it's got a partial matching, you know, but, but the uh, disadvantage will that be like, for example, if you have a data frame with multiple columns, which start with the, uh, they have similar, you know, starting name, like delay or uh, delay by arrival or delay by, you know, departure and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Then they will make, uh, it will be difficult there. But if it's just one column, then yeah, it's fine. It will still uh, match to the column and bring you what's in that column. Or you can use like here as well this one, the brackets, and you give the column name, or multiple columns, you can concatenate and use it. So yeah, so the basic thing is between table and a data frame that table is strict, it won't do partial matching like here is the data frame do it for you. For table, you have to give the full name of the, like here, if we, if we change this data frame to s dot table, and then we try to use this, then it won't. It will give you the warning, and it won't give you the the column values. Uh, so you have to give here like this the full name, or this. Uh, as I think, pretty obvious, clear. Yeah. Is that clear to you guys? Yeah. yeah. And then there's another question. So say if you have the name of a variable stored in an object, for example, variable MPG, how can you extract the reference variable from a table? Okay, so the way I understood it, for example, if you have a data frame and you have different variables in there and but you are interested in this variable and you save the variables from this data frame into this uh, vector, and if you want to, uh, the reference variables you want to bring it, then you can just still use data frame 
and you say that this variable from that data frame and it will still bring you new values. But if you use it like this, data frame what variable, then it wouldn't work because in this case, it will be looking for a, a variable name VAR in that data frame, which is not there. It's only because we have created a special vector and we've given it a VAR name. So mm -hmm. it will only work this way, but not this way. Is that making any sense? Yeah. Yeah? Makes sense to me. Um, yeah, so let me read the question again. If you have the name of a variable stored in an object, example, B, so the name of variable stored in an object, what is the object here? So this is, this is the object, v, the VAR, so. In the object, right? Object, and this is MPG is a, is a variable from this data mm. set, yeah? Mm. So if you save it here, like sometimes you, you extract different variables and give it, you know, separate names mm -hmm. just for ease of your analysis. So, yeah, how can you extract the reference variable from a table? Yeah, so because this is from that data frame, so although it doesn't have a variable called VAR uh, in their data I understand frame. you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gotcha. So it wouldn't work this way because it will be looking for that variable and every, yeah, there is gotcha. not, it's only outside the... Gotcha, camera. Gotcha. So this is, this is one of the other questions in the exercises. And, uh, well, I think that's all I have, yeah. Nice. Okay. Cool. Very nice. Just on time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think there are a couple of more questions, but um, yeah, I so, haven't even looked at it. What is yeah, yeah. One thing also um, maybe uh, in table is about recycling, the issue of recycling. Okay. Yeah. So tables do recycling, as you said, only if we have a, a value of one in one variable. Do you? Yeah. So, oh yeah, I, I, I know, I got that. Is it in yeah. the book? Yeah. But is it, not, is it not in the data frame as well? Or is it just in table? Uh, no, the data frames, the problem with data frames is like the recycle, even if it is not one variable, mm -hmm. but tables recycle only if a variable contain only one stuff. Okay. Yeah. So it, it is it recycle it for the oh, rest that. of the yeah. calculations, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. That's good to know. Um so what's happening next week then? I mean Yeah, so next week it's uh data import. Yeah. Oh data imports and read R. So yeah. Alan, are you the one? No, no, it's, it's, it's not me and um, I unfortunately cannot be able to, I won't be able to do it because um, I, it's, it's so crazy for this week and next week. Yeah, yeah I can do that. Yeah, no, that, would, that would be great. Would yeah, be... I can do that, yeah. So, yeah. And uh, I think, um, um, yeah, I think that's all my question because like, <laughs> uh, uh, that's the question. I want to ask and I don't have any question. Yeah, so I will prefer for the next um, stuff like that. Okay, I'll, I will write up your memo. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. All right. Yeah, very uh, good, very good presentation, Khan. I think it was also a very good dis discussion. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> though Khan. Camera say that uh, I ask questions. I I I, I yeah. dig more. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? I are you doing PhD or should you be? Yeah. You you, uh, you you don't you can't be a PhD student. Why? If you're thinking too deep up and just a table print. <laughs> you have too much time. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like it just now before the uh, before the. Uh, sessions like I started looking at the book at two o'clock and read the okay. go through. But it's good. I mean, that's they say like a 
it, uh, you know, attention to detail. I, I wouldn't even, even if it comes to my mind, I, you know, I'm the kind of person I just, uh, no. yeah, just what it works for me. I wouldn't go dig deep into something yeah. unless and until I need it. <laughs> no, what really touched my attention was like, he said like enhanced print. So I was like, okay. ah. so that was like, oh, is it not the normal print we know? <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so yeah, that's yeah. what, yeah. Mm. All right, I'm going to stop the recording for now. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. <laughs>